The end of the RFCL season approaches, and with that, a new champion will be crowned. Seven teams fought for the chance to call themselves champions in this season's playoffs. Some of these games were blowouts, others pretty close battles, and most of them were pretty predictable. Unlike past seasons, insanity was few and far between. Despite that, we still got some games to go over. These are the Fallen. <laughs> this game shouldn't even have happened. This Mercer team somehow managed to force a play-in game because the computer poll is their number one fan. So Mercer gets a shot to make some history. And what do they do? They get blown to smithereens. NMO's heavy run offense was too much for Mercer in this game, and combining that with both Mercer quarterbacks Abba Yosef and Lauren Ward playing very poorly made it pretty easy for NMO. Unfortunate that this Bear squad got matched up with a red-hot NMO team who somehow fell all the way to the 6th seed after finishing the back half of the regular season with a 5-1 record. But nonetheless, this Bearcat squad absolutely bulldozed the Bears. NMO wins the first ever play-in game 35-8. It was a good turnaround season for first-year head coach Nismo, and they have something to build off of for next season. But Mercer shouldn't even have been here in the first place. <laughs> This was one hell of a matchup. Two teams looking for their first playoff wins out of their new brand set up for an exciting playoff matchup. And exciting it was. NSU's offense was dominant on the ground while Creighton had some things go their way in the air. But the deciding factor was who could get defensive stops. And Creighton could not get one if a gun was pointed at their head. Until it was too late, that is. An early interception for Northwestern State really set the tone for the whole game causing the Demons to be one possession ahead the whole game, and when you can't get defensive stops, it's game over. Northwestern State wins their first playoff game in team history 27-21. Tough season for Creighton, had a shaky 3-3 three three start but won their last two games to get a playoff spot, but couldn't get the job done. They played really well, but NSU just seemed one step ahead the entire game. Head coach Pars will have one final chance to win his first national championship in Season 6. See you there. <laughs> this was something I was not expecting. I know Lake Erie is a semifinals lock almost every season, but I thought with how hot this NMO team was at the time, they would handle the storm easily. And boy was I wrong. Lake Erie played at their own pace and dominated the time of possession, taking as much time as possible when they had the ball. NMO tried to do the same thing, but Lake Erie's defense played much better than NMO's, and that's what the game really came down to at the end. Lake Erie beats end of most 17 to 10 because VY3 can't do anything in the clutch. Sucks for end of Mo too. They really should have been seated higher than six in this playoffs. After all, they did make a conference championship and Lake Erie did not. If that happened, maybe the Bearcats would have played somebody else and won. It also doesn't help that Lake Erie is 5 and 0 all time versus end of Mo. Pure dominance from the Storm. After the loss, end of Mo defensive coordinator coach Cappy announced that he will be stepping away from the RCL. A key piece and award-winning coach gone for the Bearcats. It'll be interesting to see where Endemo goes from here and who they hire as their next DC. They've came a long way from the 0-3 memes, but ultimately fell short of their goal. <laughs> Lake Erie might be cursed to never make it past the second round, and who else but UCO to eliminate them again. Lake Erie's so-called best offense in the league managed to score a whopping zero points at elimination game. UCO didn't have the best offensive performance, but that doesn't matter when the defense doesn't allow any points and forces interceptions. This is so bad for Lake Erie, because I feel like this was their last chance to do anything in this league for a while. It may not seem like a lot, but the loss of offensive coordinator Coach Jara leaves Lake Erie with no offensive play callers and zero offensive identity. Unless new offensive coordinator XL becomes an offensive prodigy, Erie might have a hard time getting things done next season. Pair that with the uncertainty of defensive coordinator Coach Core staying next season makes it hard for me to believe that this team will be successful next season. But they did take this current roster that was bottom four talent-wise in the league and made them a third seed. Head coach John will have his hands full next season. Will he be able to make it past the second round or make the playoffs at all? Only time will tell. <laughs> How in the hell did App State lose this game? They have a way better team, better record, and literally beat them during the regular season. Their Heisman winning running back had his worst game of the season by far, and Sandy Bones reverted to his season four self. 
App State struggled very much on offense during this game, and it ultimately costed them their season. MSU didn't shine greatly on offense either, but they did enough to win. This game came down to whose defense could play better, because both these teams love to do clock and take as much time as possible when they have the ball. And NSU's defense holding App State to three points in the entire game ultimately got them the win. Tough end of the season for App, had so much talent and promise, but failed to win a playoff game. But you know what the real problem was for App State in these playoffs? The Heisman curse. Heisman winning teams have never, and I repeat, never won a playoff game in the RFCL. Their fate was already sealed when Hunter Myers took that trophy. Luckily for App State, they will keep the same coaching staff and will arguably have a better roster next season with all these red-shirted five-stars they have. Still, though, what a missed opportunity to make it back to the national championship for the first time since season two. These playoffs were not that great, to be honest. Outside of one game in the first round, all these games were pretty predictable. Nonetheless, we have a champion that needs to be crowned. Entering from the right side of the bracket is... Oh no. No, 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 no. Not you guys again. When will this misery end? Well, the answer to that question is possibly next season. If the Broncos manage to go back to back, then the dynasty might crumble because offensive coordinator Coach Wad would be gone. But that doesn't matter to this team. That doesn't matter to Wad. Wad leaving would be a small price to pay for their third championship in team history. QB tandem Mason Taylor III and freshman Johnny Jolly have played great all season, with them rotating into the starting spot throughout the season. Running back Nadir Green looks to put another ring on his finger by breaking tackles and dominating on the ground. And freshman wide receiver Casper Hausman Zada looks to win his first ring being UCL's leading receiver. Defensively, the Broncos are also stacked, with Saul Goodman playing up to his potential all season, Cactus Jack striking fear into the receivers' hearts, and other notable pieces that are sure to bring the heat in this championship run. Head coach Gerald is no stranger to these big games. He's won two national championships and has never missed the playoffs in his tenure. Offensive coordinator Coach Wad has been working with this offense all season and will pull out all the stops to win his third ring. And defensive coordinator Coach Raider looks to allow zero points in the playoffs with another dominating performance in this championship. This UCO team is hungry for more, but who will face them in the ring? Coming in from the left side of the bracket is... This team has surprised me again and again this season. Going from 3-5 and five and missing the playoffs to a 5-3 and three record, had the number one ranking in the league during the season, and made the national championship without a first round bye. This team has shown throughout the season why they earned the right to play in the national championship with their slow, methodical offensive attack on the ground. Freshman QB TB12 looking to seal the season of a lifetime with the national championship. Running back Happy Gilmore being the leader of this offense and is one of the main reasons why this team is where it is right now. And wide receiver Voodoo getting the ball in the backfield and in the air makes for a great dual threat player that any defense would have to adjust to. The high flying defense for the Demons will make any offensive coordinator think twice about passing. When the offense can't get things going, this Demon defense is always there to bail him out. Head coach Orpheus is looking to win his first national title with the team he created a season ago and is looking to establish the Demons as a team to be feared for seasons on. Offensive coordinator Coach Mason is the mastermind of this staff, always knows what to call and when the defense is going to get caught off guard. I don't think any other coach could do what Mason is doing with this offense that lacks skill, but excels on the field. Defensive coordinator Coach Sneak looks to keep this high-powered UCO offense in check to win his first national championship in his five-season-long career. Two teams, one championship. So, who will win? I think this is going to be one of the best matchup of the season, but it will all come down to who will get the most defensive stops. And I think UCO will do that and then some in this game. UCO's defense is just way too talented in my opinion. As for the score, I think UCO will win it 24-14. NSU will keep up in the first half and probably lead going into the second half, but UCO will score, get some defensive stops, and run away with the game. Now watch NSU win by 21. 
The national championship will be streamed tonight on this channel with me commentating. So if you want to be notified when the national championship goes live, hit that subscribe button. We have a whole bunch of content coming out for College Football 25, as well as Coaches League content for Season 6 on Revamped. So if you want to keep up to date on League news, join the Discord. And with all that being said, I'll see you guys tonight for the Natty.